Hey guys, what's up? Hope everybody's doing very well. If you enjoyed that animation, then welcome to my video on Missile Guidance and Control Fundamentals. So let's begin. So the objective, right, is to make sure that you have the target and the missile intercepting. The guidance system, what it does is that it ensures that the missile will point in the correct direction. Because obviously, to hit the target, it has to go there, right? So obviously, it has to point correctly. You have many types of guidance. You have pursuit guidance, so that is when you have the missile simply following the target always. You have something called proportional navigation, which this video will focus on. You also have LQ optimal. So this is analogous to the LQR controller design. Instead of using it for control, you use it for guidance, but the idea is the same. 
you have something called Q Kappa. So this one is more complicated and more advanced, but we'll not be looking at it now. Just for this simulation, we will ignore the missile seeker. So if you don't know, the missile seeker is placed at the front of the missile. It's like a radar system. So that seeker will actually determine the target, its location and where it is. And it'll give the guidance commands. When you have missile guidance, you have many types of it like laser guided, infrared guidance, semi-active homing, passive homing, and so on. But these are all looked at when you have the seeker commands in there. But for this simulation, we will not be looking at the seeker. So we will just be looking at the missile itself and pointing it based on first principles. And if you want to learn more about seekers, I recommend you read the paper in the description below. So yeah. All right. When it comes to the missile guidance itself, you have four phases of flight. You have launch, mid-course, terminal, and then intercept. These four phases occur every time we launch a missile aimed at some target. It could be anything. So that is when you have to take these into consideration. During each phase, the missile behaves differently and it has specific things to accomplish. In this picture, you can see pursuit versus proportional navigation. So in pursuit, you always point at the target, but in proportional navigation, as you can see here, you actually predict the intercept point and you will hit the target much faster. So you will travel less distance and you will not need to achieve like a steep angle, right? Because you don't want to make the missile turn too much. If you want to know more about the derivations and how this actually works and along with the math equations and all that, I recommend you look at the few links I have in the description below which correspond to proportional navigation. So for our system, we'll be using a 2D guidance model, as you can see there. So A is your acceleration, V is your velocity vector, lambda is the flight path angle or the line of sight, R is the range, and M and T stand for missile and target. So if you look at the missile seeker, what it actually does is it'll focus on measuring line of sight or lambda there, as you can see. So that's between the missile and the target and it'll point it appropriately. So if you look at the missile M, you have to distinguish between AM and A lambda, right? So lambda is the flight path angle, this will change. But AM, that is perpendicular to the velocity vector. When you define missile guidance commands, you have to actually determine AM or A lambda. And we will look, look at this after. The target could, could be moving at VT or some velocity, it's a maneuvering target obviously so you'll have to take that into consideration the idea is to make r less each time so the range must decrease only then you will have the missile approach this target and the missile velocity must be more than than the target velocity so based on that picture we have the proportional navigation guidance law there and if you want to look at the derivation once again i put links below so you can see it you have to either calculate A lambda or AM. So once again, VM is the missile velocity. VC is something called the closing velocity. So that'll be how fast the range will change with time. It is a negative value. So it'll be DR over DT. So how fast the rate of change of the range is changing. Obviously for intercept to occur, the range needs to get smaller. So R dot should be less than zero. Lambda dot is the rate of change of the line of sight. So this is, you just get the line of sight and take its derivative. So it'll be decreasing or increasing. This can be based on your geometry and when the missile is fired. The term N is called the proportional navigation constant. It's something between three to five. So we'll be using the formula AM, not A lambda. So AM is equal to N times VM times Lambda dot because for our control system, that's your set point, right? So the control system will be targeting some value of AM. So it's much simpler. So that is the acceleration command perpendicular to the velocity vector. Some notes on implementing PN guidance. You have to constrain the accelerations because you don't want the missile turning too steep. Obviously, you have an actuator on the missile or it could be canards, it could be fins, it could be like a rocket nozzle too. So 
you have to avoid steep angles right so that's very important the actuator has constraints and it cannot achieve very high accelerations based on lambda m or lambda dot m the vector will be either positive or negative this will be based on you and you will just have to experiment and see in the links below in the description it shows you the derivation of lambda dot it's actually just acceleration over velocity along the line of sight or along the velocity vector it comes from the Coriolis equation here is a simple autopilot command it's a multi-loop structure so we'll be using the three loop autopilot structure here so very important you can design this with root locus or PID control any way you want so here is your loop autopilot we will be using you have to get AZC so that's your normal acceleration perpendicular to velocity so then we have the simulation parameters so I took the autopilot model from this paper which you will see after when I build my simulation you have your initial conditions of the missile you have velocity flight path angle it's pitched up so it's fired from a silo for example you also have x and z positions you have the target you have the target flight path angle and your target height it starts at 20 kilometers above the ground so the target is descending a bit we will launch the missile when the the delta x position is less than 200 meters you will also activate the guidance command when the speed reaches 950 meters per second so it'll cruise at a constant speed at 1021 meters per second lastly the actuator is a second order system taken from the paper itself so so let's begin let's begin with typing the matlab code so we have to first put the degrees to radiance command the target parameters velocity x and z and the flight path angle l t0 the missile parameters position and flight path angle initially and the control loop gains from the control system design which you will implement after in simulink build a new model let's first build a control system so you just have to use the control system they give in the paper from jhu applied physics lab so just put the transfer functions in there you're told everything for the actuator the missile parameters itself along with the outer loop so we just have to add them here for g2 and g1 you will have the same denominator because it is a two-state system and that's for the actuator it is a second order system as you can see so just connect them and drag in the blocks to complete your loop autopilot so integrator gains and sum drag in the input that will be the acceleration command the output will be the missile acceleration and the angle we will approximate a small angle of attack so the pitch angle equals the flight path angle roughly just add the gains in there k i k r and then k a so complete the first loop the second loop or change the sign and then for the outermost loop you will put k a in there so you have to connect the outer transfer function to it and for the final loop you will put kdc so just as per the paper from the pitch rate you can get the pitch angle so just integrate that and for the initial condition you will have to put the initial flight path angle lm0 put the outputs and then make a subsystem so that's your control system for the missile right so that is the autopilot we can do a quick test so just drag in a scope and an input acceleration just to see what it does run that first your matlab file as always and then run the simulating model compile and then run it so it goes to one which is very good so yeah that works well and we can now continue so now we're going to specify the motion so 
so that's velocity of the missile cosine and sine so that is the motion of the missile which we are wanting to specify now so it'll just be cosine times velocity sine times velocity so just drag in those blocks from the math operators command the input will be the flight path angle and the missile speed so we will put those inside the model then so just connect them like this is super easy specify the initial conditions for x and z so don't forget this is very important within the integrator block and let's mux them and then output them as position of the missile so just connect them and then output it so that's your missile motion so we can make a subsystem there and let's continue so we have a lot more to do so <laughs> don't get bored okay <laughs> All right, so now for we just copy and paste that for the target. So the equations are the same, right? It'll just be VT instead of VM for the missile. And the flight path angle will be that of the target. Also change the initial conditions to XT instead of XM because now we have the target instead of the missile. So just move it around, make sure it, you can make it look neat. So drag in the constants for the flight path angle and the target velocity. So put them inside the block as you can see here. Uh, once again, don't forget this because you will get the wrong simulation otherwise. Let's output the target position X and Z in a similar manner. And now we will calculate the missile velocity based on a MATLAB function. So you'll see what I'm doing here. So the missile velocity is constant, right? So like it'll be a 10 21 meters per second so when the missile is less than 200 meters away then we fire it for the velocity we have a lag because the missile won't speed up and immediately it'll take some time to speed up so you will have to do that just as an approximation so do this what i'm doing here uh, fix your scope so you don't so you can see all the data points drag in an embedded matlab function which you will use to calculate the velocity based on the position of the target and the missile and just connect them and then let's now do it so the output will be the missile velocity and the input will be the delta between the x positions of the target and the missile define two persistent variables so del represents the target x position minus the missile x position so if it's less than 200 then we fire the missile So if it's more than minus 200, right? So it's the same idea. Set velocity to 1021 and then just put the output there. So that should be it for the command. So that's it. So that's it for the missile input velocity and the target position. So we can make another subsystem here. Um, call it a target motion. Let's change the outputs there so we can get the velocity second. All right, so now we have to do the the guidance and navigation command for proportional navigation. So this will be based on many parameters and it's in more details. So um, just do this very carefully. It'll calculate the acceleration commanded for the missile based on the guidance law along with the range. So let's just do that here. Uh, drag in all the blocks now so we can drag in derivative, product, math function, square roots, sum, addition, subtraction, so whatever you need constants um, multiplexer you know compared to constant because we will stop the same simulation at some point so drag in a stop as well so the inputs will be the position of the target and the missile and then we will calculate the range and so on so this first is dragging all the blocks make the trick function a tan 2 that's your line of sight also drag in a saturation because we will saturate the acceleration command as you saw in the slides before and drag in addition if you want all right now let's make everything so inputs are the target position the missile position we need to demux them to get x and z individually we calculate delta x x target minus x missile same thing for z 
Z target minus Z missile. So that's the difference in the position. So now we have to do delta x square and delta z squared. So change that to square. Then we can calculate the range. So we need to add them up and then take the square root of it. I could use the aerospace toolbox, but now let's just do it from scratch. I'll get the derivative of the range. And when the derivative is zero or, you know, more than zero, that's when the simulation will stop. So change the operator there. So yeah, now I just connect these very carefully. It has to be plus minus because the difference. So yeah, delta X and delta Z, as you can see there. So now we have to calculate the law. So it'll be just N times velocity times your rate of change of the line of sight. We can also output the line of sight in degrees so we can see it when we run the simulation. So that's your PN law, as I said before in the slides. So just um, do the products. Change that to missile velocity. So that'll be your missile speed. Then we have the constant, right? So the constant will be set to any value between three and five is good. So just do that. For now, I made it one, but I'll change it after. And that's your acceleration command. Okay, so we will saturate that from negative 0 0.10 to zero. Um, this can vary based on what you have. So just keep that in mind. So you may have a positive command, so that's okay. Well, let's drag in some more blocks, switch, scope, from and go to. Let's just route the signals there because we need that into, we need to input that into the ATAN2 command bottom. So that's your DX and your DZ, so delta X and delta Z. So we can just um, drag in a scope block so we can output that after when we run the simulation. So let's just first mux them. So we just need the Z positions count. So yeah, fix that scope again. Just put the outputs as required and then close it. Make it 45 seconds. And for A tan 2, it'll be obviously delta Z over delta X because that's the numerator, that's the denominator. So just change the blocks there as you can see here. dragging a display for the line of sight in degrees and so now we have to switch the acceleration so only if the speed is more than 950 then we do it so it has to be more than 950 and then we can output it so otherwise it'll be zero right so that's how we do it with the switch command and yeah so that should be your whole thing for the proportional navigation guidance law command so we can do that so that's your guidance law essentially. So now we are done everything and we just have to connect it. So this is very easy. So let's do that. First change your solver. For me, I use the fixed step solver. Just for me, I did this at 0.01 seconds. VM. Can see here let's put it there we can output the acceleration to see what it looks like but first connect anything else data range change your display block parameters to bank if you want to so run that and then we'll run this again here so it should work so the range goes down to about seven meters so that's very good so that's when you will have detonation of the warhead so i mean that's when you have your impact that's your miss distance they call it so i changed the guidance command to three the constant for the pn law and now let's plot what we have so we can see here so that's your output now it should work and that's your interception point so that's when you have your strike and yeah 
I hope you enjoyed this video and it's very interesting stuff for sure. So thank you for watching.